There we go. Welcome, everybody. This is Joanne Coy and I having coffee. And judges have <laughs> coffee. <laughs> we have our same mugs and everything. We've got the same mugs. Isn't that wonderful <laughs> with our WDAA insignia yes. with Dami on there? I'm sure everyone knows you, Joanne, but I'm just going to talk about these credentials, which are amazing. And I just love that you said you're a lifelong student of the horse and a <laughs> member of the WDAA board, Wadami board, and the Glass Ed board. Wow, thank you for all that amazing work. So to be on boards is a lot of work. We really appreciate that. Large R Western Dressage Judge, USDFL grad and chair of the Judges Education Committee for WDAA, which is a very big deal. And thank you for all of the education that you provide for all of us. And, and welcome to this. I love the part on here that said you'd been a competitor, rider, and so on for WD and DR, but also competitive trail riding. And mm -hmm. you have to tell us about riding horses, race horses, race harness horses under saddle. That's got to be an incredible story. So welcome, Joanne. And I have a list of questions. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. We're so excited. Every, it's all about getting to know all of us so that competitors don't come up to the box and say, wow, there's not really a person in there. We are real people in here <laughs> <laughs> yes. in, in the box. Before we start with my regular questions, I just have to know about <laughs> this racing hmm. harness horses under saddle well, um so many years ago uh the harness horse industry decided it would be fun to ask people if they'd like to race their harness horses under saddle so we were racing at the time my husband had harness horses and he said gee joanne this would be a great idea for you to do <laughs> so, <laughs> so um we were actually featured on espn and um, I was interviewed by ESPN after the race. We raced in Indiana first. I had a lovely um, harness horse that was also one of my riding horses. And we uh, tacked him up in all of his harness gear, minus the cart and race bike. And um, and I rode him around the track as fast as he could go, probably, oh, 33 miles an hour or whatever. <laughs> it, was, it, was a one, it was a two minute, seven second race. So, you know, for a mile. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. My feet got caught in the hobbles because pacers have to wear hobbles. And that's and that slowed him down a little bit, but it didn't it didn't deter him from doing his best. And we did that at four different racetracks. It was a circuit. And then uh, and then that was it. I said to my husband, OK, that's it. I've done it now. <laughs> Move on. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Joanne, were you wearing a helmet? I'm sitting there going, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely a helmet and a safety vest. And I was racing with people that had never even ridden before. They just raced harness horses and they just wanted to give it a try. So fortunately, it wasn't a paramutual setup. People weren't betting on us, which was good. <laughs> but uh, but they were watching and it was it was quite interesting. <laughs> you know, as horse people, we had some of the most unique experiences. Mm -hmm. And those of us that have been around a long time have done some really unique things. That's an yeah. awesome story. I Unique like that. another another word for crazy. <laughs> well, hey, you know, and in those days we didn't know right. that what we did. Like now right. I'm old and I go, gee, I wonder if that was safe, you know? Yeah, I'm but sure it was. Think about it when I was doing it. Right. I was having a yeah. good time. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's really great. Well, share with us one of your most your funniest or unique or heartwarming stories about being in the box, about judging. Do you have some stories like that? I actually have two. They're very short, but I want to, I want to tell them both because they're both kind of amusing. They both involve kids. And of course I work with kids in my other life um, away from horses. And I just love kids and, and how passionate they are about horses. Well, I was um, at a show and the arena had changed from a large arena to the small arena, but nobody had moved the letter A up to where it belonged just outside the arena. It was still set back way away from the arena. So this little girl comes in, cute as a button, and um, she's on her little pony and her mom is reading her test for her. And during the test, there's the, the directive, A, circle 20 meters. So she went out of the arena, <laughs> went over to A, and did her 20 meter circle outside of the arena 
and then came back in and her mother looked at me and said, what is she doing? And I said, she's going to A. <laughs> so we had to redirect her. Her mother said, honey, you, you have to stay in the arena. Well, it wasn't really her fault. Somebody hadn't moved the letter up. So she was doing her 20 meter circle where she was supposed to. <laughs> By that's a, that's that adorable. was pretty fun. And, and I, then the other the other experience I had was doing um, judging online. And in online judging, you get um, riders from all over the world. And this particular rider was from Sweden. Again, a little girl, if you can picture little yellow braids sticking out from underneath her helmet. And she and the backdrop was was a picture. I mean, sometimes when I judge online shows, it's often hard to focus on the test because the background is so beautiful. And um, anyway, she's doing her test and apparently she went off course. And um, I knew that and her mother recognized it who was reading her test. And of course we have a rule against coaching, right? So her mother all of a sudden is redirecting her in Swedish. <laughs> she's got this, you know, kind of voice. And um, the little girl looked at her mom and I thought, okay, I assume this is coaching, but I don't speak Swedish. <laughs> but it was really quite cute to watch this little girl with her little yellow braids and her mom screaming at her from the side. <laughs> but and then, kids they, are the, and so then they turned in the test, you're thinking, why didn't they redo that one? <laughs> right, exactly. And that why is the issue, even in why English. Did, yep. Why mm -hmm. didn't you retape that one? <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> well, in the beginning, the first few times people do the online show, sometimes they really don't know what their opportunities are. Right. You know, and they're still learning. So yeah. um, it's always a learning experience in it the is. first online shows. It is. And it's a lot of fun for the judges, I think. It's a great opportunity for people all over the world to show for qualified judges. And it's great for the judges to see what's happening literally around the world. So I think it's opened up a huge avenue for, you know, more and more people to show their passion for horses and Western dressage. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. I am too. I love, love, love online judging, don't you? It's, mm -hmm. I really, really mm -hmm. like it. Yes, yes. And it, it is one of those things that it's, um, you have to be passionate about it. It is much slower and it takes more time than live judging. But if you've got the patience to do it, it's just amazing. And it's quite a learning experience for, for green judges, for judges that are beginning, they can really train their eye. They have a lot of mm -hmm. opportunities to improve. So you know, can look at a lot of rides. And I like it because in many cases, you know, for a while at the beginning of online judging, people thought it would take away from in-person showing. And I don't think it does at all. It enhances it. It gives people an opportunity to get their feet wet. It's not easy to produce an online test either. I mean, you've got to have a crew. You've got to have somebody to read the test unless you're really good with your PIVO. Um, you've got to have somebody there to record. And it, yeah, it takes a village. But we usually, when we do it at my farm, we have like little online judging parties and and people show up and we have snacks and, and it takes all day. It just does. So yeah, it's, there's no shortcuts, <laughs> That's but it's a lot of fun. That's a great idea to have yeah. kind of get together in a party and support each yep. other. That's yep. a great yep. idea. Wonderful idea to share, Joanne. That's wonderful. <laughs> hey, if you had a soapbox and you got to, to uh, tell us all about what your soapbox is, what would it be if I gave you a soapbox and said, get up there and tell us something, Joanne? Well, there's a lot of training tips, you know, that I'm sure your um, people that you interview come up with. I mean, one of the ones I, I embrace is this sport in particular is all about harmony. So you need to develop your relationship with your horse in whatever way you can um, through many different means. I'm, I'm a real big advocate of groundwork. Yeah. And, you know, enjoying your horse, trail riding, um, building that relationship so that when you do get on the horse and practice your riding and, <clears throat> you know, work through your tests and so on, um, the relationship shows because harmony is the beacon that we all uh, use as our guide in Western dressage. And if you don't have it, it, it definitely is noticeable. So um, that's the one thing I would definitely advise people about. And a little tidbit for judges, 
um, because I am the judge education chair for WDAA, I want judges to realize that people are showing because they love the sport. And we as judges, especially in Western dressage, make a huge effort to not burst their bubble, not make them want to quit the sport. We choose our words very carefully. Um, we work very hard to nurture the passion <clears throat> excuse me, rather than <clears throat> extinguishing it. So that's the thing I, I like to, you know, mention when, when talking about judging as well. I'm glad you did because that is really the point of this coffee with judges is that we wanted, I wanted, I wanted people to understand that we're cheering for them, that we mm. want them to do well and that we celebrate horsemanship and we celebrate each other and all the unique horses they'll bring to us and their unique performances. And we also, many of, most of us ride, train, compete, participate in Western dressage. And we understand when you go out there, you might have a good day. Mm -hmm. You might have a bad day. We've mm -hmm. all been there, but I wanted them to know us as people to understand that we're mm -hmm. we're cheering for everyone, for ourselves exactly. and for them and for the horses. Exactly. Our, our judges really are like that. And we're not sitting there thinking, wow, this one isn't going to the Olympics because none of us are interested in that. <laughs> That's not <laughs> our goal. <laughs> Very true. Our, our Olympics is is well i mean first and foremost getting the horse to uh become the best athlete he or she can possibly be so we can increase their longevity and make them more useful there's nothing there's no greater gift to give a horse than education so that if it somehow doesn't become your horse anymore and it's someone else's um it will be useful you know to the end of its days i had one judging experience where um it was actually at the world show um a young lady was having trouble with her arabian horse and the horse was really quite upset for being in the indoor arena and it was a green horse and having a hard time and she was having a, a difficult time navigating it but she stayed in the ring and my comments throughout the test you know were of course I had to evaluate what she was doing that wasn't correct but I also made some comments about well, good job for you to to keep that horse in the ring and not losing your composure and you know you hung in there that was really an awesome demonstration of patience and confidence and so on and um she knew she had a bad ride <clears throat> and when she got done i only know this because i heard about it afterwards she called her trainer and was crying about what a horrible ride she'd had and it was just coincidental but the very next day i happened to go to a barn and there was her trainer and her trainer said oh did you judge the world and i said yeah she said oh one of my students had a terrible ride there and she was crying and going on and on about what an awful time it was in the ring. And then she called me back a few minutes later after she got her test and read the the comments. And she was like, oh my gosh, she thought I was a fabulous rider because I kept the horse in the ring. You know, so that, I mean, it, it's so important that we um, congratulate the riders for what they're doing right, help them to fix what's going wrong um, and keep that fire burning, uh, you know, that they have about, loving their horses and wanting to make them better. That's what it's all about. It is. It is truly all about the journey and we're all on it together, oh, yeah. Yeah, all on it together. And isn't it, uh, it's heart wrenching. It's so difficult people. I mean, we really are soft hearted to watch someone having a hard time. And we realize, like I, I sit there myself and I have empathy because I'm like, Oh my goodness, she's doing a great job staying with that horse. I might have fallen off myself. Wow, she just stuck with that. Good job. Yeah. You yeah. know, your brain is actually thinking you may be having to write down four because it was insufficient mm -hmm. because maybe it's running backwards or whatever. Right. It is. But, yeah. you know, you're still trying to write something positive and encourage them. And your brain is thinking, you know, they're doing a great job. So, right. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I'm so glad that we talked about this because competitors need to know, despite the fact that we're there to point out what they can learn to do more in their training, we're still sympathetic. Oh, absolutely. Because we've all been there. Yes. And, and many of us are still there. Exactly. <laughs> it's clear that we're all very passionate about this. Judges are very passionate about Western dressage and most people in Western dressage are very passionate. That's why we're all here together in this community. But with that in mind, 
What's the one thing that you would share with all of us about this, about Western dressage or about this passion? Um, we do a really good job in Western dressage of writing the tests and preparing, you know, all of the information online that a rider can access. And of course, we've literally recreated the wheel by writing the uh, training pyramid a little bit differently into a wheel shape. Um, that was kind of the bra brainchild of a few of us. It was one of my, um, I guess, uh, concerns about the pyramid. It always looked like it was uh, you, you establish one level and then you get to the next level and then you get to the peak. And so the wheel makes it a little bit more um, even as far as all of the things you need to accomplish. Of course, there is a uh, a sequence, but definitely working toward the, the middle of the wheel. And I would advise all riders to study that wheel. I mean, keep that in your barn, um, make it obvious to your students when you're working with your students, discuss the elements, the training elements, because the, the basics of the wheel are what it's all about. And um, whether you use a pyramid or the wheel, it doesn't really matter, but keep going back to that. And um, and that will help you. And, and as well as the directives on the tests, read those directives. They're written in there so that you can understand what the movement involves. That's what the judge is looking for. We as judges reread those many times. Um, I don't think all of the judges have every single element of every single test memorized. So we're often looking at the test, looking at the directive, looking at the purpose of the level. All of that is written by a core of individuals um, who go over that. That's why we only do test rewriting every so many years, because it literally takes us that many years to rewrite the test. So um, study the test, look at what's written there, and that'll help guide you. I know we have a lot of people all over the world, as I said, who don't have access to instructors. Um, you know, it's maybe too distant to drive to an instructor and of course, now we have um, an opportunity to Zoom with instructors and, and get help that way. But um, for many, the only way they're learning is through the progression of the test. So that is, they're written for a reason. The movements are, are set up for a reason. Use those as your guides. Go back to that all the time. Go back to the USEF rule book and look at your definitions of the different gates and, um, you know, what the judges are looking for in the gates and so on. Even if you don't show that, that's very important to use as your guide. That's wonderful information. And you know, I say to people too, I actually print out the rules and carry them with me. They're only uh, 17 or 18 yeah. printed pages because it's only like 35 or 30, 36 pages. So printing it out is every single, I do yes. it at least twice a year. And I'm always sitting there, even looking under like definition of the jog, definition of the low, like mm -hmm. all of the clarity of the basics is written right there. So you bringing this up is really a great opportunity to remind people. And I appreciate that, mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. need to keep thinking about the basics and the explanations are right there within our rule book and on the test. And I think sometimes we're just like, oh, I'm looking at the pattern of the test but mm -hmm. reminding people to read the purposes of the test right? and right. the directives and of the test, and then focusing on the general impressions at the bottom, even the descriptions of what's mm -hmm. under those is very important because mm -hmm. as judges, we're looking hard at that. So sort of basics, 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 isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what's going to help the horses. It, we, we can't have riders turning the calendar page and saying, okay, new year, therefore I'm moving on to a new level. It's, it's not about that. It's, it's where your horse is in its development and sticking to the basics so that you can increase the horse's development and work your way up the levels um, with your horse and <laughs> not with your calendar or with your, your own personal program or idea. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. This was wonderful to have this chat and I appreciate it very much. Well, I appreciate your inviting me. It was great to talk with you. As always, Ida, enjoy, I enjoy all of your elements of education and all that you're doing to help spread the good word about horses and, and training them and making their lives better for their humans and for them. I thank really you. appreciate your hard work. Thank you for that. And thank you for yours. You are certainly one of our best educators and I so appreciate working on all of those boards. It's such a lot of volunteer work. Thank you so much.
I oh, appreciate you're welcome. that. You're, you're welcome. It's my passion. <laughs> Ours too. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like the information we provided today, don't forget subscribe, like, and share. Also, check out IdaNorrisDressage.com and Ida Norris Western Dressage on Facebook.